So there's something about playing golf in that setting, in the dunes. That's where golf starts. So there's something about when you get to play Link's course that you're actually playing the golf in its, it, the iteration in which it began. I'm not like someone who looks back and, and wants to like live in the past and wear knickers and play with hickories. That, that's not kind of what I'm interested in. I just think that there's something very pure about that kind of golf that demands a lot of imagination. Um, it, it requires you to think about so many different things. And so to stand over a shot from 100 yards and think I could hit this seven different ways. Um, I mean, that just fires the imagination. I think that is so cool. And, and I think that's the way golf was at one time where, you know, uh, everyone had a different kind of swing and a, and a hundred different kinds of clubs in their bag that they made at home. And, um, and to kind of come out and play a little piece of that or play with that kind of imagination is, uh, it's addictive, man. When you talk about golf and you talk about golf travel, it doesn't take long for the conversation to turn to Ireland in some way. It's a place that's been at the top of our list for a long time. It's something we really wanted to showcase to people. Welcome to season four of Taurus Sauce, Ireland. Kennedy from Experience Ireland Golf was the main catalyst in making this trip happen. We sent him a dream itinerary of golf courses and he put it all together. If you're putting together a trip to Ireland, big or small, we couldn't recommend working with Tom and Experience Ireland Golf any more than we do. Chad Coleman from Callaway is one of our oldest friends in golf and uh, we brought him along. Actually, he had to come along to supervise us, make sure we didn't spend uh, too much of Callaway's money. And finally, we were lucky enough to be joined by Mr. Ireland himself, Tom Coyne, an author and senior writer for the Golfer's Journal. He literally walked the circumference of the country of Ireland, played every Lynx course along the way, and wrote about it in his book, A Course Called Ireland. And as we would soon find out, pretty much everywhere we went, he's kind of a celebrity. Tom joined us on day three of this trip, so much more to come in future episodes on that. My expectations for Ireland, it was really high. I've been to at least about half of the courses that we played. It's not a big deal. I was thinking very green, and I was thinking very friendly people. I think if you can't have fun hanging out in Ireland, you're, you're probably not a very fun person. I really didn't know what to expect with the golf. I didn't know how it was going to blend in or stand apart from Scotland and England. Golf eyes, I don't think we overkill it here. Uh, you know, the good thing about us is probably less is more. We don't try to, you know, kick your ass with too much stuff. It's it's pretty gentle, it's Irish, it's, you know, great hospitality and got great golf courses. The secret is not to overdo it, I think. I think we have uh, something that's unique and small um, that can't be competed against. Just full of character and there's a bit of soul to Irish golf in the southwest of Ireland. You know, here in Scotland and a bit of England, Outside of that, there's nowhere else in the world that have pure Lynx golf courses the way we do. Um, and it'll always remain that way. And with the planning now, there's not any new ones going to be built. If, you know, no planning authority is going to give you any permission near these dunes to build new golf courses. So what you're seeing is the existing courses we have getting a good in investment uh, from money and you know more people come and play them more money goes into the club and it just gets better and better what else i love about it is the accessibility uh and the welcomes uh i mean even you know every club here has visitor tea times they're happy to see you i mean yeah they're they're member clubs and they have members but there isn't a club in ireland that you can't play with a credit card you know i think it's an irish way you know i mean our our saying kate me to fault you you know, it's just basically welcoming everybody with thousands and thousands of welcomes and that's an Irish nature, it's always, always our way. What's your favorite thing about Ireland? Hold on. Hold that thought. <laughs> Come on, really guys? Really? Well, trauma through, so I thought it was safe. You know, we understand that you coming in here 
you're coming in and you're listen not only you're playing golf you're going to drink a few pints and you're going to have some food and you're going to stay somewhere you're putting money into the community the community is going to benefit local boys and girls and you know moms and dads are going to get employed and make money as, as a result of it so we understand the bigger picture of all that um, I think probably the, the feedback that we get about um, the, the warm welcome and I know it's a bit cliche but I think people um, yeah just find find the Irish people just very warm and welcoming and I think it's natural you know it just it's it's not it's not stage or put on I think we we do enjoy inviting people into our, our homes or our business whatever you know I think um, yeah we're I suppose we're proud of our country and the, the scenery and um, we've got a constant topic to talk about in the weather as well, so it's great. <laughs> <laughs> Very pleased to see you on board with us this evening. We do hope you're comfortable now and that you enjoy your flight. How was the flight? It was short. It was only five hours. It was almost too short. I know. Like, we're, we're here too early. Yeah, great welcomes with Irish golf, and they like to have fun. Um, I think there's a real spirit of, you know, they call it the crack. Um, a word you'll hear a lot, I'm sure, in these, in these episodes. But we're here for the crack. Hey, crack on. We're, we're looking for the crack. We're trying to get a crack. I hope you guys got the shepherd's pie. Oh, dude, it was great. Oh, my God. Yeah, Maybe the so best in-flight meal I've had. Yeah. Shout out, Air Lingus. No free ads, really. <laughs> Shout out, everybody. Uh, first thing off the plane, in the airport still. It was early in the morning, so we sat down for breakfast, and you have to get the full Irish. What exactly is black pudding? It's kind it's of like congealed blood, right? Fried pig's blood or some other stuff. There are certain items on there that I wouldn't normally associate with breakfast. Do you know it's very versatile? It's pretty good. So it's kind of like the Irish ketchup. Yeah, it's good. It was fun. Some blood pudding. It was interesting. Uh, definitely edible. I, you know, I wasn't in a hurry to eat it again. Oh my God. Did you make these? We did. We, we did. Yeah. That's no, did you nice. make uh, <laughs> I want. I want. Uh, I did actually. Uh, <laughs> What's the Irish stance on playing in hoodies? Because I kind of want to play in this. Thing. Yeah, I think it's uh, yeah. You know, it's. I think it's use your best judgment, but don't be a scumbag. Okay. Always great advice. <laughs> you can always cut on that. Sure. What do you think? So drivers on the right side. It's gotta go on the right. Okay. Cover up that little scratch mark for him. Yeah. That's a good one. So you should have seen us trying to get the stickers off the uh, RV in California. Yeah, it was like hotel. There, there were a lot. There were a lot worse problems with the RV than that. We didn't. I hope we didn't bring it with you. You know, Mike's one of those guys. I think right away, at least I felt he was going to be a good fit for us. He was very stern. Is very, uh, you know, by the book guy, but I think we got him loosened up a little bit. You all know where your um, passports. I hope this is the right place. Did you sleep well? Of course I did. He just had great energy, and I think that's what I latched on to initially was like, oh, if there's nobody else I'd rather, you know, spend the next 10 days with than Mike. I, I knew we were in good hands. <laughs> Mike, are there any rules on the bus? That was the are there any rules? Yes. <laughs> okay. I, I miss the man. I really do. I think you're in one of the most beautiful countries in the world. So just having the opportunity to actually like look out the window while you're driving instead of you know white knuckling and, and being stressed out the entire time uh, makes your week that much better. I'm being, I'm being vain in the back of the bus. <laughs> wow, very cool. It's new comb. You got the Joel Osteen vibes going. The prosperity gospel. This is admittedly half-baked. I thought of it walking out of the airport. But kind of like a pass the hat game, where every time you make a birdie, so everybody that wants to play owes the pot a certain amount of money. Whoever makes the last birdie on the trip, Kind of like, takes the whole pot. It's kind of like golf and a biscuit. Like I don't, I don't want to. So how about this? Every time somebody makes a birdie, we put a we put a, a pound in the pot or every, a euro. Everybody else, <laughs> or a euro. no, it's pounds here. No, 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 it's euros. Euro. Right. <laughs> Come on, do not say that. I'll read a book, TC. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Brexit's got me. Look, Brexit's got me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, you guys know I'm a big guy. <laughs> Uh, 
Mike, Nobody what's that statue all about? <laughs> oh, there is my guy! Looks like uh, Icarus! That's, that is uh, the flight of the arrows. Uh, that was when the Irish people had to leave uh, the, the, the land after the uh, 16th century. Oh, Alright, well, not, not no, quite as fun as I thought it was. <laughs> now, do you play golf? No. I have enough of problems in my life besides running it out and after a small ball. <laughs> <laughs> The Duel and Pigeon Putt was perfect, man. Right off the plane, you're you're not you know you're not going out there looking for golf balls or uh, grinding you know hitting four irons into four club winds. It's just uh, it's really light and breezy, and you're right by the cliffs of Moor, and it's just it's like the perfect way to start. It's just absolutely stress free. I think that might be more challenging for me than playing a, like a normal course or real course, just because I'm hitting nothing but shots that are completely uncomfortable for me. It looks very simple now. <laughs> Even I can win. God, I might quit the game after this. Yeah, we opened this about 25 years ago. Okay. There was quite a demand because of the fact that there was a lot of tourists here summer months. tip for someone going to play the golf course? My tip? Yeah. <laughs> Trying to avoid the wind. <laughs> you a skins game? Skins game. Yeah. Skins. Keep it simple. Come on, everyone's just trying to find it right now. I don't know why Neil's obsessed with pitch and putts. Yeah, Neil plays uh, almost all of his golf at the Flushing Meadows Pitch and Putt in Queens. Because he's so long. Like, you'd think he'd... I mean, maybe he's just that disciplined where he knows he needs to... That's what he needs to work on and he makes himself work on it. I consider them a better form of practice than going to the driving range. If you consider my options, it's Chelsea Pier with loaded range balls, or it's going with a wedge and a putter and playing 18 holes. I think that's a better form of practice. I think he's just obsessed with them because he lives near one. And that's the only place he can play golf. One club, one putter. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows the rules. Everybody knows the rules. <laughs> Neil has gone long. <laughs> oh. I said TC off first. Is it his time? Ooh. Ooh. If I was gonna do it again, I probably wouldn't bring a, just a pitching wedge. I think, I don't know what I was doing. I was so excited to like be in the dunes and playing Lynx golf that I was just like, oh, I'm gonna just carve all these little pitching wedges around and, and keep the ball on the ground. That's up here, guys. There's it. absolutely no way this is getting out. DJ, back where he started the bunkers. <laughs> no, that wasn't his ball. Oh, that was. <laughs> Is it Scotland all over again? Take right, it up and throw it. Go ahead. Dueling pitch and putt not really set up for that. Listen, we all want some. What of a thrill one. that would be. Randy's gonna do it right here. Quit f***ing around, Randy. Make one. Whoa. Sick! We might need to spread Neil's ashes at this pitch and putt. I, I chipped it pretty well. There were a couple bad moments in there too, uh -huh, per usual. But the dual one pitch and putt kind of takes you back to that truly just like we're in a field right by the edge, right on the cliff. It's about probably as good of a look into the simplicity of what the game likely used to be. And one of the, I don't know, few places I've ever been that made it look, that just simplified it so much to say, all right, here's holes. Go play them, go nuts. Have a good time. <laughs> Had a great time. Oh, Thanks for having us. Oh gosh, all right, we did Ireland. Let's go. Yeah, I want to go around again. I love pigeon putts.
can you explain your newfound role as the, the B-roll boy? I just, I have an eye for that B-roll, dog. It's just, it's just that mindless B-roll. It's like a drug dealer. It's like, open up your vest. What you need? You need, you need a walking shot? Huh? Huh? You need merch shots? You, you, you know want a time God. lapse? I got Come a time on. lapse right here. Huh? You need that hyperlapse? You know, oh my God. You should let it go longer. <laughs> you, man. I got no mentors out here. Trump Dune Bag was, uh, was very interesting. Mm. I don't know. It was, like, I'm still struggling to place Dune Bag. Right, well, I'm, my name is Brian Shaw, and I'm the PGA professional here at Dune Bag. Have been for nearly 19 years now. Yeah, well, Dune Bag, um, originally designed by Greg Norman, but then it was a redesign by Martin Autry. When President Trump bought the golf course, he brought Martin in, who's, uh, Martin was the lead designer for the RNA. You know, it's a nice piece of property. It, it sits right on the water. It's just a beautiful piece of land that just meanders through the dunes that you, 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 you'll adore. So the goal for any I play this game a lot, you have one sip and you have to get the black line exactly in between the harp, the bottom of the harp and the letters. We've got about you know, 15, 20 seconds. <laughs> All right, let's cut, Rainy. Let's look. And then we're back. All right, ready? Line broke this morning. Yeah. Too much. Yeah, that's pretty close. What was that? It's, it's, it's uh, you know. It's no hobby. It's not a hobby, guys. <laughs> it's, it's not a hobby. No hobby. It's my, this will be my first Guinness. That's and you've never had a Guinness one anywhere? Of my concerns of the trip is I like cold beer. So, is is it cold? How, how have you never had a Guinness? I've just never had one. I've never had one. Never oh, said, hey, you know what? That looks, that, that's that that's room temperature. Beer, <laughs> beer looks, um, that, that looks professional. Right, so so feel it. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, cheers, cheers, guys. Cheers. You cheers. Know, to new, you know, to, to new time. beginnings, new horizons. Yeah. <laughs> Smooth. It's nice. Yeah. You can drink a lot until it's very light. Uh, the golf course was fine. It was a good level setter, I think. It was probably not my favorite of the ones that we played over there, but it was, you know, you're still playing Lynx golf by the ocean and, and you're still, you know, enjoying these incredibly sweeping views and playing the ball on the ground and, and it still has all the best elements of that. Playing dune bag first off, like first thing off the plane was kind of made me appreciate a lot of the other courses more, if that makes sense. Plus it's like, it's a really nice place to just like sleep and have like a post jet lag shower and all that stuff. Big dunes, I think, you know, I'm not sure the course uses the dune structure like some other courses. But there are golfers that would absolutely relish an opportunity to go to this place. A lot of people like really nice things. They like a nice, really warm shower, really comfortable bed, good food, cold beer, nice restaurant, nice clubhouse, beautiful scenery. For some people, that is all that matters. And I don't mean to disparage that even in the slightest. I, I know a lot of people that would absolutely love this place. You know TC's gonna find a fair, right? TC? Big right miss plays yeah. well in this wind right now. Oh, oh Randy, it's gonna play all week, like Randy. All week, man. Um, yeah, we might have um, championships on the board that, you know, from 1908 or whatever it is gonna be, you know. You, you still feel that there's a, there's a history to this land. The community always had this. They played football here. They did, you know, they did everything here. They farmed us. The one person who held out would not sell their place, uh, wouldn't sell it to the original owners, wouldn't sell it to the Trump organization. They wanted to keep their house. Uh, and so Neil and I were kind of like, that's sweet. Like, let's go, what's their story? Like, let's go knock on their door. <laughs> well, my name is Anne Carrick. I am originally from Drumbeg, lived away, lived from this house. Grew up in this house, did you say? I grew up here, yeah before there was ever a golf course here. When I was a kid, I was a bit of a tomboy. Uh, I'd be out running up and down every hill there was from morning to night. My parents rarely saw me. John, heads up. Well, I'm gonna catch that then, huh? I think you gotta address the elephant in the room uh, and whose name is on the front door. Um, 
and also the restaurant and also the water bottles and also the Wi-Fi and also the pillows. And um, that's a whole other conversation, I guess. Candidly, I don't do a ton of research when I go on big trips because I like to be surprised, I like to keep the expectations low. Didn't know who owned the joint. Uh, it's hard to miss once you get there. Well, I think they call that one the, the Trump's hair bunker. <laughs> what was the reaction in the community or internally or whatever when, when Trump bought the property? Well, I think at the time we were looking for a new owner and it was a, a great sense of relief initially, you know, because there was somebody that was going to come in here and invest in the property. Listen, I suppose political views aside, Dimbeg needed the investment. It really did. It's only when, when it was put in that you realise how things had, had uh, deteriorated in a sense, you know. I would have said that without them, um, we were definitely in a, in a, in a spot of bother. Um, it, it, it would eventually close down, yeah. You know, I mean, we have about 300 employees here um, in high season, and the village really only has about 600 people, inhabitants. Without the resort, what are those three or 400 people doing for work? Well, immigration. You know, that's that was really what was on, on the... Uh, um, was on the cards and that's what's happened in, in rural communities of Ireland for years. So there are no factories in the area or um, tourism basically was um, pretty much or is, is, the, is the biggest employer in the area. You know if I'm being candid if I were planning my very own trip to Ireland I probably would not have gone there. Um, just personal preference. He didn't build this course, he bought this golf course. It's very different from what happened with his golf course in Aberdeen. He basically bulldozed a lot of politicians there, you know, went into a protected environment and messed around with some stuff that he was not supposed to mess around with and it really left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths in the Aberdeen area. We didn't get that vibe really in Doombeg. It seems that most people have positive things to say about what kind of an effect the golf course has had on the community. It's part of the golfing landscape over there, right? So I don't think, you know, I don't think it's it's incumbent upon us to ignore it. And the golf club obliges all these people by bussing them into the village so they can yeah. have a few pints or whatever it is they like to have and uh, they're safely back and that gives business to the, it means it's good for everybody, you know. That, you know, I'm not gonna put myself in a bad mood. I'm not gonna, you know, let anything like that ruin my experience, Find try to find the, the positives in it. And I think, I think we did that as a group and I think it was nice for me to hear about and see those things. It just makes it really hard for this to be such a black and white issue. And it makes it really hard to say, I will never go spend a dollar in support of that guy uh, because you go and you look at who the you know that same dollar is supporting and I don't know you feel you feel a little differently about it so it's it's a complex interesting place that you're free to check out or not check out but this is what it looks like Oh, you got one? There it is. Really? Second one? My, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what hole is that? Four apart over there. You're probably right there. Yeah. Just, you know, just postcard par three. And, uh, you know, I tried to hit a little, little chippy nine. And it, big right miss. The and you know, my, my guy, uh, Big play today. Captain Solly Solenberger. What got excited? I saw a ball down there. A couple of, yeah, couple of Callaways. Logo, and I was like, <laughs> Neil. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Oh, so close. I started to walk that one in. <laughs> Guys, it may be a birdie blanking today. Oh boy. 
Tell we need it. Come on, let's please. Can we please find one in the last two holes? Perfect. Two holes left. Oh, he did it. Oh, oh. Oh my oh, god, oh, I thought oh. that went in. <laughs> oh my god. I had to look at it, right? What'd you, I did. What'd you hit? I'm telling you. Hey! Yes! <laughs>